Mr. Roth, did the government tell you that the Biden laptop story was fake? No, sir, they did not. Did they tell you it was hacked? No, sir, they did not. On October 14, 2020, Twitter blocks the New York Post story on the Hunter Biden, uh, the, the New York Post story on Hunter Biden and suspends their account. The night before, FBI Special Agent Elvis Chan sends you an email. The email says this, heads up, I will be sending a teleporter link for you to download 10 documents. It's not spam. Please confirm receipt when you get it. Two minutes later, 6.24 p.m., you respond back, received and downloaded, thanks. What were those 10 documents? Twitter didn't give me access to my laptop, but Special Agent Chan has said publicly and the FBI has confirmed that those documents did not relate to Hunter Biden, and that's my recollection of them. What did they relate to? My interactions with Agent Chan and with the FBI almost entirely focused on what the FBI called malign foreign interference, things like Russian troll farms and Iranian involvement in the elections, not on any type of domestic Any of the activity. information on there classified? No, sir, I do not hold a security clearance, and so I would not have received any classified information. Who does hold a security clearance? I'm, gonna, I'm just going to second email here. I'm just curious about this. Uh, what I propose is that 30 days out from the election, this is, a, this is another email to you from Mr. Chan. 30 days, you get, we get uh, temporary clearances. You pick who they are. Who were the people at Twitter who had a security clearance? To be honest, sir, I'm not sure. And we never ultimately followed through on this plan to get temporary clearances. Did anyone at Twitter have a security clearance? It's my understanding that at least some current or former employees did hold clearances, but I wasn't certain about Ms. that. Ms. Gaddy, do you know if anyone took up Mr. Chan's offer to hand out security clearances 30 days before the 2020 election? Not that I'm aware. So we don't know how many people had security clearances. Twitter, do we know? Mr. Baker, Mr. Gaddy, Ms. Gaddy, anyone know how many people at Twitter had a security clearance in the 30 days prior to the election? I don't know the answer to that question. Ms. Sir. Gaddy? I do not know. Mr. Roth, you don't know? No, sir. How about the last one? Ms. Navaroli, do you know? No. I mean, yeah. it seemed like the offer was to sort of just hand them out like candy. I just wondered who had them. No one knows? Okay. Uh, did, so the FBI didn't tell you uh, that, the, that it was fake, didn't tell you that it was hacked. Uh, and, and Mr. Roth, did the, did the story violate your policies? In my judgment at the time, no, it did not. Yeah, that's what you said. Said what I would propose, uh, excuse me, is you said it isn't clearly a violation of our hack materials policy, nor is it clearly a violation of anything else. So I think what a lot of people are wondering is if it didn't violate your policies and they didn't tell you it was fake, didn't tell you it was hacked, why'd you take it down? The company made a decision that found that it did violate the policy. It wasn't my personal judgment at the time that it did, but the decision was communicated to me by my direct supervisor, and ultimately, I didn't disagree with it enough to object to you know, you know what? You know what I think happened, Mr. Roth? I think, I think you guys got played. I think you guys wanted to, wanted to take it deep down. We saw what the chairman put up where you said, you know, everyone in the White House is, is a fascist. I think you guys wanted it to t be taken down. I think you meet with these guys every week. We know that's been established in the Twitter files. You had weekly meetings with Mr. Chan in the run-up to the election. They send you all kinds of emails. They send you documents on the super secret James Bond teleporter. You get information on that. I think you guys wanted to take it down. I think you guys got played by the FBI. And that's the scary part. Because we had 50, I mean, the, the, this to me is the real takeaway. 51 former intelligence officials five days after you guys take down the Hunter Biden story and block the New York Post account. Five days later, 51 former Intel officials send a letter and they say, the Hunter Biden story has all the classic earmarks of a Russian information operation. The information operation was run on you guys. And then by extension, run on the American people. And that's the concern. And to Mr. Raskin's point that you guys aren't bound by the First Amendment because you're a private company, okay, maybe so. But your, and your terms of service don't have to comply with the First Amendment. Would that be right, Mr. Roth? They don't have to. You've said that as much in your testimony. My understanding of the First Amendment is that it protects people and businesses from government, not Understand. forms how to... What I'm, and, and your terms of service. So here's what I want to know. Here's what I want to know. Is this, is this a violation of the First Amendment when the government, Mr. Chan, again, sending you an email saying, we think these accounts need to be looked at because they violate your terms of service? That's a different standard. So you got the government saying your terms of service, which don't have to comply with the First Amendment, but the government saying, we don't think these accounts comply with your terms of service. Please take them down.
you see a problem there, Mr. Mr. Roth? Mr. Chairman, I'm seeing a flashing red light. I'm happy to answer the question. Um, do I think that that's a valuable use of the FBI's time? No, but I don't see in a request for review a problem under the First Amendment, no. I sure do. I, I, I thank the gentleman. I yield back.